Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Welcome back. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my 1997 Airstream B190 Overland Camper Van with the U-Joint Off-Road 4x4 Upgrade. for 25 years in the service and sales and marketing part of it I always seem to get asked what's the perfect RV but everybody's gonna have their own vision on what works for them I've had Airstream travel trailers over the years and uh, you know I work 55 to 60 hours a week so booking a campground around the weather really wasn't an option for me so I always had a dream and a vision to build the ultimate camper van and uh, it wasn't until the Winnebago Revel came out where I became inspired to have some type of go anywhere off-road rugged overland vehicle and being that I'm so closely tied in with Airstream I really couldn't go out and buy another brand so there has been a cult following of Airstream B190 owner groups and uh, B190 was a Ford based Airstream conversion motorhome full bathroom kitchen you know you name it and uh, they built 1384 of them between 1989 and 2000 and uh, I was on the lookout for one and it quite a long time I always had an idea I wanted to do something with it uh, but I just could not find one with low mileage and or in really really exceptional condition and I, I really had my eye out for a 1997 or newer because that was the first year of the Ford V10 engine uh, so I finally found one it's uh, lived in Arizona most of its life had 74,000 miles on it and uh, I made the purchase I immediately sent it to uh, U-Joint Off-Road in Fletcher North Carolina they do some excellent work on four-wheel drive conversions. Uh, a big step above what we would call like a Quigley van. Uh, they do. Uh, they have a much better approach with more high-end materials. And uh, I shipped it down there, and about five months later, I had a four-wheel drive Extreme Airstream Overland van. Their conversion package starts about $22,000. Uh, but you could add bumpers, tires, lighting systems, uh, onboard air compressor, and you could double or triple that depending on what your, uh, your fantasy is. When I first bought this van, it was a little bit dated and faded on the outside. So the camper top, which is part of the Airstream conversion, I had the decal stri stripped out off of it, and it was just uh, a flat white looking color. So I had a vinyl shrink wrapped. The stripes and decals that are on the side, I had them removed, and the bottom portion was a, a baby blue. I had that rhino lined. And you join off road, they did a great job. They, they hand make this aluminum plate bumper, and uh, they do that right in their shop in Fletcher, North Carolina, as well as the whole four wheel drive conversion. Then I added rigid industry lights. I have some amber and some spotlights here. Underneath, it's got a Dana 60 front axle with 410 gears and Fox 2.0 shocks. Uh, on their bumper, I had them put a front uh, receiver mount and it's prepped for uh, a winch. And this has onboard air, it's an ARB uh, compressor, so I have air chuck on the front and rear. And then this is the Warren Industries uh, con uh, control where you plug the controls in. Huge on off-road. I had them do their uh, diff cover on the front and then it, uh, they custom made the leaf springs for me as well. And they're just standard uh, F350 uh, brake calipers, uh, E350, F350 brake calipers and rotors. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd have probably upgraded to the F450 just for a little bit better braking power. The steps were part of the Airstream conversion. I had them rhino lined as well. 
Uh, I bought one that never had an awning and I don't really have a desire to put an awning on it because uh, I feel it takes from the aesthetics on the exterior. It screams uh, camper. You know, I'm a camper. I'm camping out here in the street overnight and um, uh, I don't think I'm going to utilize. I'm not going to hang out and drink beers underneath the patio. At the door here, I have a first aid kit, a chargeable LED flashlight. There's speakers in the front cab area, there's speakers in the middle, and there's speakers in the back door. Have a fire extinguisher. Put a, an Airstream uh, welcome mat when you come inside. There's a furnace duct as part of the furnace system that ducts the whole front area of the van. And then um, I handmade these wax canvas uh, pouches. So in this pouch, I have some emergency flares. Uh, if you break down on the side of the road, glow sticks if you need emergency help. And then I built a section of cabinet off and I have this side as an emergency uh, roadside kit. So I have an ax in here, I have a Leatherman tool, I have uh, a saw, I have a plate for a bottom of a pneumatic uh, bottle jack, so if I get a flat tire and instead of jacking up the jack, I have onboard air, I could use the pneumatic part. I have tow hooks in here, I have a special uh, shovel in here, I have all the tools to take the tires off, gloves, rubber gloves, everything that I need in an emergency situation I have in this one cabinet here or in this general area. Up top here I have some ratchet traps. You never know if one of your holding tanks comes loose when you're driving. You have a way for emergency repairs, whether it's a propane tank or something comes this large from underneath. I have the means to do so. I put a Rigid Industries light as the porch light. So uh, they have uh, special lights for uh, their scene lights they're called. I have one in the front, one in the rear. Underneath is the propane tank. It's pretty easy for the guys to fill. That runs my water heater, runs my furnace, my refrigerator, and my cooktop and oven. These are 35 inch tires, and I had the Pro Comp rims put on. This is a six inch lift total that U Joint did on this van. That's uh, their standard uh, conversion they do. And uh, I added airbags in the back, Firestone airbags. So I need them when I fill the tank with fresh water or load the van down so I could change the way, because all the storage is in the back. So I could really dial in and get the best ride possible. But these airbags are not connected, they're actually in a cup. So if I I need some deflection of the axle to actually pop out of the cup instead of stretching out all the way. This is the furnace discharge for the propane furnace and that is my cooktop ventilation and I had a, a company locally called Blazing Visuals when they shrink wrapped the top I had them recreate Airstream's logo up top for the B190. If you notice, this is uh, made out of stainless steel. The original ones were plastic, but Airstream does sell aftermarket upgrades. Uh, you can make that stainless steel and the portable. There's a 20 gallon portable fresh water tank. This had a plastic door. I opted and upgraded it to a stainless steel. So you just pop the cap off, stick the hose in loose, and there's a uh, uh, air release. So allows the air to release out of the tank and an overflow as well. Uh, so I did that stainless steel. And this is the Atwood water heater. This is the exterior compartment, so it's got a drain plug, gas valve, ignition, and exhaust, pressure relief valve. Uh, I upgraded that to the stainless steel of match, as well as an outside GFCI protected electrical outlet. So all my outlets in the motorhome will work when I'm plugged into shore power, it's a 30 amp shore power connection, or when I start the generator. And there's two outlets inside that work off an onboard 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This is the engine exhaust. Uh, but also, I have access I could get to my waste hose of storage tube, so I made a little compartment here so I could slide it out this side or the other side. And then there's a low point drain for the fresh water tank. So when I'm done using the motorhome, I could just drain down the fresh water tank. And the whole underside of the frame, I had POR15, I had it all sanded down. There wasn't a lot of rust because it was an Arizona vehicle, but since I had it all apart, I wanted to start from scratch, so that's all been done. And then this is a luminous rear bumper with the spare uh, with the bike rack and spare tire carrier. So I have the one-up bike rack. I have two of them for my bikes. They're easy to load on and off, and they're secure. I got a heavy-duty lock that secures them to the frame of the rack. It just is a second line of defense. This swings out. 
and it gains us me access to the back door area this one swings out and this is a very sturdy aluminum made rear bumper so a lot of the steel bumpers that they have are just so heavy i'm already close to the gross vehicle weight rating which is just under 10,000 pounds right now as it sits i'm 9450 but with all the suspension upgrades i'm sure i increased that capacity just a little bit but once you have these open there's pins here that you could drop in and lock the carrier in open position in the bumper i had them uh, wire in some reverse lights and uh, Vantage Optics, I uh, have front and rear taillights from Vantage Optics, which are LED, that's an upgrade. The license plate's relocated, so I added the live riveted plate. This lifts up, and inside I have a power cord and power cord extension. And then you can lock this compartment as well. And then uh, I also have a seven way for my uh, trailer a uh, brake controller, a hitch receiver, an air chuck, which uh, is conveniently located next to these two valves, which is I could dial in the suspension. Up top, uh, below the third brake light, I have the backup camera. And when you open the back doors, it gains you access to all my gear for mountain biking, beach, skateboard. And if you look at the curtains that I made, this one is a full panel. But this one's a half panel because when you close this door, it meets up right here. And I wanted some light to get into the wardrobe. So when I opened the wardrobe, I could see what I'm grabbing. And then I had a local tinsmith make this stainless steel insert because originally the spare tire would have been here and exposed plumbing would be covered by a little curtain there. But since the spare tire lives outside, I had this uh, stainless steel insert. And there's an access panel I could take off to get to some low point drains or plumbing if I needed to. But while I was in there, I just tapped off the faucet here and added an outside shower. So I could take the hose out of this container, snap it right in. I have the Pelican cases. One of them is a Deemer box. Uh, I highly recommend. These are great speakers, great bass. The charge lasts for a long, long time. I only charged it once last season. But you could open it up and you could put your wallet inside and any belongings that you don't want to get wet, like your cell phone. There's USB charge port in here and there's a plug that you can stick in this, the base hole and you can float this in the pool and you have music in the pool. But I have that and then I have all the tools I need. So the yellow case, I have the tools that I could operate. I have a long compressor hose, emergency fix a flat. Uh, I have an air chuck. I could blow out dirt off the back, but I could stick this in. And then I could dial in my rear airbags. And I keep a uh, rear at 62 when I have water on board but you can go all the way up to 100 you just don't want to go below 15 but it's great because when I deflate the tires I have the automatic tire deflators I screw on and I drive off-road when I'm done I could come back here and hook up to the air compressor and pump up each tire individually uh, it's very convenient when you're out in the middle of nowhere to have air and then I have another box here. The bottom one has all the tire stuff for mountain biking. This has all my tools in it for mountain biking, gloves, and even a skate key for the skateboard. So they just stack right in this compartment. And the bungee cord just goes through the middle. Just keep them in place if you're on rough roads. And the skateboard hangs on a ledge here. Then I have all the uh, uh, brooms. I could sw I could uh, sweep off the bike or sweep off the back of the motorhome. I got some Oakley sunglasses in here. Then I have my winter mountain biking boots, hiking boots, and then my uh, uh, regular mountain biking, gravel biking shoes. They all hook on these little hooks right here. And then on on this side, the helmets hang up, nice and neat. You can see the pouch system. Uh, we'll show you that when we go inside. 
And then I have all my gloves and accessories, a pump. I even have a hammock and a rain suit. So if you're breaking down in a pouring rain and you've got to come outside and work on it, i got a full rain suit I could throw on real quick. And then underneath that is uh, the battery for the coach. And then the box up behind there is where the water heater cuts into the body. So I pretty much have everything I need uh, to go out for today. And then I have a Rigid industry spotlight back here. I can illuminate this area at night if I'm working on the bike or loading stuff in. That's very helpful. And these are very secure once you have them dialed in. The waste system, <clears throat> the two ta the tanks are all heated, so when you have the furnace on, there's ductwork that goes down into the insulated tank chamber to prevent that from freezing. It gives you about a 10 degree boost in temperature in the tank, so you know, if you get below freezing at night, you're still in a, in a safe situation. Uh, the discharge is here, so I take this cap off. I take my waste hose out of its storage tube, snap that on, and then I always, best practice, open my black tank first, which is toilet, pull that straight out. Now you have solids and debris in your waste hose. When that's done draining, I close it, I open up my gray, which is sink and shower, and that helps clean out and discharge the waste hose. This is a Marineco 30 amp easy lock connection for my detachable power cord. Next to that is the refrigerator ventilation. So this allows fresh air behind the refrigerator. The rear axle, this is a posi. Uh, again, a 410 gears in the rear axle. I got a locking fuel cap, and then this is the generator compartment. So uh, generator runs off the same fuel tank that's on board. You can start it from inside or I could take the cover off and start it from the outside. Let's pop the hood and see what's underneath. Oh, check this out. Overland Bound, there's a little club you could join and you get a little medallion and you can put it on and they have all different numbers for different states. I had you join off-road while they had it for the, the length of time. I had them paint up the front grill. It was chrome. Uh, this matches the look a little bit uh, matte black, flat black, they painted it. It's pretty high to work on, but you can stand on the bumper. But uh, this is where the S-Pod is located that they put in. And then I went with an absorbed glass mat uh, engine battery, just like the coach battery. And check out the Vantage Optics lights. They did the side signal and the front headlight. They're very bright at night, the projector style headlights. I definitely recommend as an upgrade because the ones that were here were all yellowed out. I hear the term van life coined a lot, associating with vans and people living in them, but I could definitely say that the van, it's a big part of my life. I'm into mountain biking and doing all sorts of outdoor activities. I was always loading up my pickup truck with all the gear I needed for that day, a cooler with food, and uh, the van just works out so much better for me, and I could be out the whole entire day and have a place to eat lunch, freshen up, change, work on my laptop computer, make phone calls. Uh, I could still do some of the work that I need to do when I'm at, not at work right out of my van. So I, I could definitely say the van life to me means uh, that the van's a huge part of my life. Welcome inside. The van's 19 foot on the exterior and it's a full 10 foot 8 on the exterior height. Inside you got about 6 foot usable space. So floor to the back of the shower you get about 9.5 living space. So when I first bought this it was wall to wall blue carpeting. So if you think about the 90s you associate, everybody remembers that shade of blue. Uh, it had really frilly curtains and it had a jackknife sofa uh, with some checkered pattern. Uh, so it was a little bit dated inside, but it has good bones. Airstream did a great job manufacturing and converting this van over. Uh, it was a regular uh, metal roof van. Airstream cut that roof off and they put their fiberglass top on. And then they hand carried each one of these furniture components inside, scribed them to the inside of the van, and put them in place. So. Uh, I do a lot of work at this table. This is a, a lagoon table. The original one had a table that hooked onto the sofa that it was pretty heavy it to put in and out each time. Uh, so this one, I fashioned some type of mount block here and there's uh, reinforced in the back of this bench, which I made myself in my home workshop. And uh, you twist these dials here 
and allows you to adjust the height up and down. And uh, once you get it dialed in where you want to keep it, you could tuck the handle away. And then there's one up here that also allows you to swivel this way so I could get in and there's another one back here. So I can adjust this table any which way I want to get it. So if I want to work and sit on an angle and watch what's going out front, I could do it at this angle. But the table is completely removable and you need to do that to fold this out into a bed. So the way this works is uh, you remove the table. The table you can store in the driver's seat because you're not going to be driving if you're going to be setting up for a bed at night. And then I made a gaucho style. So these are cushions I ordered right out of uh, uh, a current Airstream travel trailer model. They wound up fitting. I measured and ordered them directly from Airstream. This slides out. Okay, and it goes all the way out. And there's heavy duty metal rollers that support up to 250 pounds per side. So I don't have to worry about it collapsing when I get up into bed. And then this cushion slides in there. This backrest, I have uh, buttons up into the wall. And the bed is 76 inches by 48 inches wide. So it's a generous amount of space. I could sleep all the way up to the driver's chair. And uh, it's uh, high density uh, foam inside. And it's easy to clean. This is made by Ultra Fabrics. It's called Dwell. And the uh, interior, the color of it is called Sandpiper. Uh, but this just snaps into the window frame in one spot. And this wall panel was originally uh, like paneling, like you have in your house in the 70s and 80s. I reupholstered it uh, with uh, a newer type of material to give it a more modern look. And then the table just slips right back on. Just line up the groove. And you just gotta make sure you lock this in before you travel, otherwise the table will fly around on you. And it's best practice to keep these in so you don't bump into them. Below here, I made an access panel so I could get to the back of the battery charger. Uh, there's also uh, a transfer switch in here. So if I ever needed access to get into this, I could do so. But I used uh, pine wood with pocket hole screws for the construction. So it's uh, very stable. And the access panel just snaps on and off. Around the corner here, we have the battery charger. Once you bring the driver's chair up, you can gain access to your breakers and fuses. And you want to make sure that you leave some airflow here so the battery charger can cool down. Around the corner, there's also an LP leak detector. And then I made this, I learned how to sew. I went to uh, Sailrite's YouTube channel, and they teach you how to use their sewing machines, but they also give you really good tips on how to sew and manufacture. So I'm not an expert, but I did make this privacy curtain that comes all the way across and it snaps in in various places and it goes wall to wall and it really blocks out the light and instead of bringing the privacy curtain all around the cab area I brought it here because it's less obvious that you're camping out so if I had a curtain that went all the way across the front windshield if someone walked up to the van they would know that someone's trying to hide something uh, with the black curtain here, it, it really gives an appearance that, you know, it's just dark in the back. It doesn't necessarily mean that I'm trying to block anything out. Uh, I also handmade the curtains on the side. This is all canvas material, and I double-lined it, and it's on a track, and it slides across, and it snaps into these little hooks on the end and it really uh, blackens out a lot of the light. I use canvas, I like that natural look. I didn't want to use some uh, synthetic material. And this window is a slider window, and the screen also slides too. So this will slide all the way back if you wanted to. Down below, this flips down, and I have all the bedding, all the pillows, the sheets, the comforter, everything in these bags here. So when you're done using them after you wash them, you uh, fold them up nice and neat and you put them into these pouches. 
and this compartment was built specifically to fit this size pouch and they fit in here really snug and they also fashioned a battery disconnect switch a manual battery disconnect switch in this compartment so if i wanted to uh, kill the battery in the back which has a group 24 series 12 volt lifeline agm battery that's hooked up to a 90 watt zamp solar panel i could just hit that kill switch down on the floor over here i have a dry erase board with a marker i have an electrical outlet this used to power the microwave which i deleted i'll talk about that later i had a local cabinet maker two-bit woodworks rebuild the slab doors uh, they were split and warped from 22 years sitting out in the desert, uh, I'm sure the heat in here was pretty high and uh, the doors started to warp. So I, I changed the hardware out and I added handles. The original doors had a little slot. You stick your hand in to open the door, but it was a little awkward to get to. I also changed out the lighting to LED lighting. Inside it's a little bit more efficient, doesn't put off that much heat. I redid a section of the headliner uh, because it was sagging. I put a new shroud in for the air conditioning and when the cabinet maker read the doors I instead of a slab door here I asked him for a raised panel but I wanted the same canvas that I made the curtains out of on the insert in the middle he did a great job and I added a premium hardware here to, to assist the door and keep the door open and in this one I keep uh, some of the pots you need some plates in here some cups and uh, they all have a J latch to keep them shut when you're driving so they don't bounce around. And this one here, what I did was I dismantled the whole entire cabinet and bought a locker and put that in and bolted it into the coach and then put the cabinet in around it. So this locker is secure, it's not going anywhere. But in here, what I could do is I go out for the day, I could lock my laptop computer in there, take the key with me, and I'm not saying it's impossible to get in, but it's going to add a, quite a bit of time onto uh, Thief's uh, time inside the motorhome to get the uh, stuff. They'll just probably come in and grab whatever is easy for them to get to. So this is going to be very difficult for them. Uh, I have some books in here, and I have some a change of clothes in this bag. In this compartment here, I have my yoga mat, and then I found this very handy. At night when you turn on the lights, it's pretty bright in here. So I got this little USB lantern with a uh, dimmer on it. So I could keep a really dim light so I could see inside the uh, motorhome uh, while I'm camping out for the night. So it doesn't add a tremendous amount of light. Around here, I have a light switch for the front overhead cab. This side here, I have uh, an extension, a leaf extension. And then these curtains I handmade myself. So uh, I studied what Airstream did on the new base camp trailer and uh, it inspired me on this design. So this window opens. And then if you want to close it off for privacy, this rolls up. There's a zipper on either side. And there's a piece of Velcro on the top. I got one there, one here, and I got two in the back doors for the bathroom area. And if you wanted to remove them completely, I just have them snapped in place. So this whole uh, curtain panel snaps right in place. Uh, I also have on this side a magazine rack I added. Uh, this is your outside porch light. I use Rigid Industries lights on the exterior for the porch light. And then you have access to get to the inverter. This is a 1000 watt pure sine wave inverter on board. And you could turn it on and off here. And that will power this outlet, these two outlets, and the USB ports below. And I put the inverter in this cabinet here, uh, mounted up, and it has a kill switch. So I mean, when it's not in use, uh, it actually drains the battery just a little bit, even if you're not using it. So I, when I'm all done with it, I'm not gonna use it for a while, I can hit the kill switch down just for the inverter itself. All the drawer fronts and cabinet doors were refinished on this side, redone. And I have a Civil War organizer in this drawer here. Down below, 
I have a trash pail I integrated. So there's a little cutout in the bottom of the cabinet to keep the trash pail in place. And this cabinet was originally a pass-through. So what you've seen outside was the, the emergency recovery cabinet. I added a wall in between the two to keep the thing separate from inside and outside. And these all have J latches too to keep them shut. The floor is a premium Pergo floor installed on top of the original Airstream rubber mat that would have been below the carpeting. Has a forced head air propane furnace system, an Atwood furnace. This I added because this was just a solid panel bolted in right in front of the sink. They could flip it out and you can put sponges in here and uh, dish rags. Has a laminate, original laminate countertop has original sink covers. This is a double bowl stainless steel sink and I found if you're driving on bumpy roads the, the P-traps kind of dissipate so you get a little bit of tank odor inside the motorhome so I put these uh, trap, uh, stoppers here to keep the water inside of the P-trap. Creates like a little uh, vacuum. Mowing faucet with a separate sprayer off to the side. Has a fluorescent light in the kitchen countertop prep area. Up top here, I have a cabinet that has all my cleaning supplies, laundry detergent, paper towels I keep in here, and uh, I could also start the generator from here. And there's an hour meter as well. And then you could switch from the generator power to go from the air conditioning or for the microwave electrical outlet. Uh, so there's a switch there so you don't overload the generator. You could turn up one or the other on. This one, Sandy, here, this flips down. I have my tin foil and uh, bag, salt and pepper in here. There's a carbon monoxide detector I have off to the side. And then I have my thermostat for the, air, uh, for the furnace system up here. So I could digitally put in the temperature that I'd wanted to keep it at and turn the furnace on and off. And when it was 10 degrees outside, I was able to get this uh, coach up to 70 degrees. And it did run continuously. It didn't shut off and on. It stayed on all night. Uh, and I did find a little bit of frost on the inside of the windows here because these are single pane windows uh, just from humidity from my body. So I could see that a dehumidifier would have been helpful. Coming back on the air conditioning, I could change the direction where I want the, the air to come out. Uh, there's some filters here I could clean. There's an Instacool that dumps air straight down. Back here I have upgraded to Dometic cooktop. It's a three burner cooktop. There's cooktop ventilation. There's a louver on the outside I have to open if I'm ever uh, using this to allow it to vent outside. And below I have a gas oven. So I'm a true believer in heating with the gas oven versus using a microwave. So I, I did remove the microwave completely. Uh, but this has a light and uh, electric spark. Down below that, we have uh, the water pump in this, in this area here with the little filter. And above, uh, we have the water pump switch that will pump the system up to pressure. Once it pressurizes, it shuts off and I can turn a faucet on. I have ample water pressure just like I would in a residential application. I have a tank monitoring system so I can monitor how much black water, which is your toilet waste, gray waste, which is your sink and shower, fresh water, which is a 20 gallon tank on this, LP gas, which is a, a 10 gallon tank, that gives you 40 pounds, approximately 40 pounds. And I can monitor how much battery I have. I could also turn the hood light area on in here. These curtains up top here I made as well. So this uh, slides across and closes that area off. And you could open the slider as well. So you just pull on these little handles and that gives you plenty of ventilation. And I made uh, these little straps here I keep it tight. Up top I can see what the temperature is outside. I have a GFCI protected electrical outlet and then the ZAMP solar system 90 watt panel I added on the roof I came with this huge controller and I was thinking about where I can mount it. It just didn't look great. So there's room inside this wardrobe back here and I sell a remote, a ZSRT1 remote kit, which is much smaller and I mounted it on the other side of the wall just to make it a little bit more discreet. 
And over here was a 12 volt round, like cigarette lighter type of receptacles. I upgraded that whole fixture to USB. So all these USBs are plugged into the lights and the GPS for uh, my mountain biking and road biking. So I'm able to charge them all right off this USB here. And I got this little felt pouch here just so it doesn't slam around when I'm driving. Over on this side, because I changed out the air conditioner, I had to cut, these are original cabinet door here. I cut them a little bit shorter so I could at least open the cabinet. But in here I have everything I need to do to make coffee. Uh, I have a circulator as well. And then I have a hand grinder. So it's great, I buy the beans, take the little cap, dish them in, stick this on, grind it up. And then the bottom here is all your coffee grind. So you can make fresh coffee inside, which I do often at work. And then I have all my cups and, and uh, utensils in here. This is where the microwave was, and I better utilize this cabinet based on how I'm using the motorhome. So again, it has the, the canvas insert to match, but this flips down. And I have my towels in here and a change of clothes and all the stuff I'm gonna need in the shower. So what's nice about it, when I was done with the shower, I was coming out and getting dressed and had all my clothes on the countertop. Now I could stay in there and get dressed, but I have all my clothes already pre-laid out on this tray here. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier and I can stay further back in the coach. Uh, so this goes back pretty deep, right up to the refrigerator vent that goes through the roof. Because the refrigerator itself, is an automatic two-way Dometic three cubic foot refrigerator. And the two ways it, it cools is an absorption refrigerator using gas or electric. So uh, either of them creates quite a bit of heat, so it needs to be vented through the roof of the trailer. But you can turn it on and off using this uh, button here. And uh, right now I have an automatic. So if I start the generator, I plug it into electricity, it will automatically run on electricity. If it loses power, I unplug the coach, it will automatically switch over to propane. And there's a little check light here that will warn you and let you know if it misfired on propane gas. And it's always safe and best practice to have this off when you're driving and to park on level ground when you're using it. So inside the fridge, I don't have much, but uh, I got some uh, bottled water here, a couple PBRs, some creamer, a kombucha, and my dinner for tonight is in this fridge. <clears throat> Below, I have another cabinet that has emergency recovery items as well as the owner's manual and all the owner's manuals for all the components inside this motorhome and a plastic uh, bifold step that I can put outside. It is quite a step up into this motorhome, so I could, I could put that out if I'm uh, going to be in and out a lot in one day. Back in the bathroom, I have a privacy curtain I could pull across. And the original clip broke and I couldn't find anything, so I just added a snap like I did for the curtains that just snaps in place. And once you have that dialed in, uh, you'll have the privacy you need to get used the bathroom. You know, I do have the zip up shades back here. And I added a utility light so when you have the back doors open and I'm working on my mountain bike, it shines outside. But I also use that to illuminate this area. So it's double use. When the door is shut, it reflects off the back of the doors and gives you illumination in this area because this light here creates quite a bit of shadow on what you're doing. So it wound up working out that way. This is all fiberglass. You got a little sink with faucet back here and then the shower diverter. And the shower wand, uh, what you do is there's a shower curtain. Let me just uh, bring that around so you can see what that's all about. This shower curtain comes all the way around and meets up with the other side. And you stand right in the middle of the shower curtain. And the handheld, I just lay leave, leave on the ground and I bring it up and there's a hook here on the roof. I could, I could shower just like normal at home or I could do it by hand. And it has a pause on it. So once I get my desired temperature, I could pause it so I'm not consistently running water and uh, I could uh, turn it back on when I'm ready to rinse off and I keep my same temperature that I had it set at. So that's pretty handy. There's a bathroom fan in here, just push up push the little red button and that vents stale air and steam out of the shower and bathroom area. 
And then there's plenty of cabinets back here for all toiletry type items. And then there's also a cabinet here, here, and here. And the toilet, <clears throat> I got a color that matches, an almond color that matches the original color. You just push on the lever, the ball valve opens, flushes the bowl, that goes right down into your 10 gallon black tank. And there's a separate sprayer off to the side. A lot of people think it's a bidet, but you could activate that when you're flushing the toilet just to clean the bowl out a little bit better. On this side, below here, there's a toilet paper holder that will stay dry. And then I built this shelf here and uh, inside the cabin, I could put shoes underneath here. And what it, what it actually is, is a laundry chute. <clears throat> This is a laundry basket that I could take out and I built this uh, little shelf here so I could drop all my dirty laundry here. And then I built and sewed up this uh, canvas so I could, I could keep clothes in these little pouches. And then there's a hanging wardrobe rod. I have all my biking gear in. And on this side, I have some more clothes put in. And there's a ledge here for more items. And I could even reach into the trunk if I wanted to. And down on the floor, there's a furnace duct that heats the bathroom area. And the light in here is hand operated. Up towards the front, there's a 57 by 67 inch overhead bed. And it's really designed for kids that parents would sleep down here. But I've slept up here before in a little diagonal. It came with an aluminum ladder. Uh, it's just a little clunky to store, so I, I leave it at home. But this slides out and then you slide the mattress forward and then it bifolds from the bottom and i got it with uh, built-in sheets so it's all ready to go and then uh what you do is climb up here there's enough room between the ceiling i can sleep on a diagonal uh, i like using this side and i leave this cabinet open and that's how i can use that lantern i can put my cell phone up there but when you get up here there's a max air fan you could pull down, twist, and that opens the lid. It's got a, a rainproof lid on it, and there's three speeds you could dial it into. And it pulls a tremendous amount of air through, so you got to have some windows open here and here in order to get that airflow through, because it could get quite hot. The air conditioning does a great job jetting the air over to this area, and there's a light up here too. And there's curtains. These are the original curtains that come all the way across, uh, but uh, gives you plenty of privacy up here. The cab area, this, this passenger seat will swivel all the way around, and I use this as a workstation. So once you get the chair parked in the right location, you can bring it all the way around. And uh, this table could then lower all the way down to the floor. And now I could do some work in this location here, and I got plenty of angles I could utilize there. So by me mounting the table in this spot, it gives me dual purpose for this table. So I do uh, really like this Lagoon table. And uh, there's a website for it, uh, LagoonUSA.com, I believe, and you could order one on there. Up in the cab area, I have um, a RAM mount for my cell phone. And I upgraded to a Pioneer navigation backup camera. It has the original like storage compartment that Ford offered. I have electric brake controller for trailer brakes. And um, up in the cab area, up in the cab area, I got USB charge ports as part of the chassis battery. A microphone for the Bluetooth for the stereo. It's an automatic transmission, and this is the manual shift for a low high in the four-wheel drive, or to switch it back to two-wheel drive. you got all your seat controls here off to the side. And then on a door, I have fog lamps and two different sets of uh, spotlights, or uh, driving lights on the front bumper. And I have the ARB air compressor. I could turn that on and off here. And i got two extra spots for additional and future expansion. And this is the original track for the original curtain system that I, I'm not utilizing up here. And uh, you know, the vanity mirror as well. Standard Ford Econoline stuff. I hope you enjoyed my van tour. If you're interested in building your own camper van, 
I'd take a look at the Airstream B190, kind of get some ideas on how Airstream laid out the inside. Definitely check out U-Joint Off-Road, Fantic Optics, and some of the other accessories I mentioned when I was giving you the tour. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it, and I'll see you soon.